It's time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. The name of the book is called, In God We Trust, The Dollar We Worship. Because it's not what you earn, it's what you keep that matters, and it's all God's. Hi everyone, I'm Sam LaSant. Thanks for joining us on The Sam LaSant Show. My guest today, the author of this book, Don Gallade. He has been on the show a number of times. He said he was working on his book. It's called, In God We Trust, The Dollar We Worship. Uh, a little bit about God, uh, Don here. It says, once Christ, this is what Don has to say, once Christ got a hold of his life, things changed forever, including the way he ran his, his practice. Uh, he focuses, uh, his focus has changed from seeking fortune to telling the good news as it relates to how we are to utilize what God has given us. Don, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, appreciate it's, it. It's been a while, huh, since you've been working on this book? Yeah, it's uh, about almost three years in the process. The, 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 the book is fascinating. I, 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 I want to tell you, I didn't read all of it. I read about half of it so far. But what I've read so far is very interesting. Okay. Uh, now, my, my question to you as to people who do not know you, who are you? Um, well, for 25 years, I've been a financial advisor. Uh, there's pretty much only three things in my life that I've done. Um, financial advisor, musician, and then, of course, I'm involved with the pro-life group. And uh, one point or another, it seemed like one, was, uh, one job took preference over another at different times of my life. And then it was as I started writing this, you know, actually, uh, I kind of realized it was all ties together. And it was just pretty interesting that sometimes we can, can't see the forest through the trees, you know, with regard to where we're supposed to be in our life. But um, I got uh, a little bogged down with, you know, having clients. Uh, first of all, they're, when, when the market's good, you're a hero. When the market's bad, obviously, you're not a hero. And likewise, with any of the products that, that, that our practice offers. But um, I just kind of felt like there's got to be more to this than just what about making money for somebody. And one day I was... Um, I was reading the, reading the Word of God, and all these scriptures involving money jumped out, and I didn't really see a correlation. And then I was flipping through the channels, and I was scrolling through some of the religious channels, and there was people on there preaching about money. Still didn't see the correlation. And then I put on a Christian radio station, and there was people on there talking, about it. and it just kept happening over and over and over and over and over and over. And finally, I just felt this, this urge that uh, I was to write a book, which is pretty funny because... I'm not exactly uh, well versed in the King's English um, and uh, started just uh, got the laptop out and just started typing and uh, at the time my wife happened to be in a uh, on a missions trip in uh, in Africa and uh, I was playing Mr. Mom so I was home a lot that particular week and uh, before I knew it there was like five or six chapters just came out and then it was tweaking from there and shopping for the publishers and whatnot so it was a work in progress that uh, obviously God had just put on me to do. Sometimes uh, any author you, you talk to or any artist or any chef, um, <clears throat> they have a passion for different things, mm -hmm. okay? And, and sometimes, you know, particularly when it, when it comes to books like this, okay, um, um, y you have groups that say, oh, one of those holy roller guys, okay? Then you have another group that says, well, you know, let's, you know, we, we believe in God. Let's see, see what mm -hmm. it's all about. I think people, what people don't like, is when things are shoved down their throats. Correct. I think what happens is that you know, they know who they are. They know what their lives are all about. They know whether they are good Christians or bad Christians or what they've done right, what they've done wrong. No one has to do this to them, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, but sometimes, you know, I, I guess in this book what you're doing is, is reminding people about certain things, right? And so maybe um, people who are, you know, who will read the book or listen to the show today, um, thought-provoking to a way, and it's not a matter of you preaching anyone, uh, but it's a matter of maybe what happened in your life. Uh, when our good friend uh, Ned Darty was sitting where you sat and he wrote Fast Lane to Heaven, mm -hmm. uh, there is a guy that you would never believe would ever write a book Correct. on Fast Lane because the guy was in drugs, he was in dope, I mean, he had everything going for him, and he admitted, okay, uh, had, his girlfriend's had abortions, and and all of a sudden he has a near-death experience and the Holy Spirit hits him, okay? And I guess people who have not been affected by a religious thing cannot relate to that. Mm -hmm. Now, with all that being said, here is Don Gallade, okay, writing about this. The book, uh, first of all, let's give the general synopsis of the book. Okay. Yeah. Well, initially, the, the first third of the book, if you will, there's, it's, it's, it's scripturally based. So there is a lot of scriptures in there. And the reason why it's so thick is rather than just putting the scripture 
the, the, the tag, John 3.16, whatever. I decided to write it out because I know myself when I'm reading something. If you don't have the other resources available and you're not going to look it up, well, let's just put it all there, okay? There it is. There's the scripture. Um, and then that way it's also that scripture reference is what we're referring to and then what I'm saying about the situation or, or an analogy on that situation, well, I'm using that as the basis. So there's no gray area as far as you're making this up. Okay, so the first third of the book basically says, this is what God says about our money. And other than heaven and hell and salvation, the, the Bible talks about money more than any other topic, period. Um, and it's, it's, it's all referenced in there as far as where and when and how. But it's very, very interesting that if money was very important to the Old Testament folks, money was very important in the New Testament folks, money is very important today. So the bottom line is what I learned as I was researching for this is it's about our obedience. All God cares about is our obedience. And we can talk about that in a minute, but just to answer your question, so the first third of the book talks about that. The second third of the book talks about my industry. And there's people in my industry who do exactly what I do who are driven by greed. There's customers that are driven by greed. It is what it is. And that was actually the kind of one of the fundamental basics on why writing it. And the last third of the book talks about, all right, well, where do we go from here? Okay, we hear all of the conspiracy theories and there's the, the, the what ifs and the one world governments and the new world orders and all of that. We address all those conspiracy theories, but we also address it strictly as the Bible being the guide and the basis for that. So some people will uh, read that and immediately dispute it because they don't believe that the Bible is the irrefutable Word of God. Mm -hmm. well, I can't help them with that. Um, other people might read that and as you said, ah, it's just another one of these Bible thumpers. Yeah. I can't help them with that. So the, the net net is you take it at face value and people are either going to like it or they're going to hate it. Um, but I'm not supposed to be the Holy Spirit for somebody. I'm just saying, hey, think about this and meditate on it. See where God leads you. What, what was your um, um, interest uh, in, in religion? Because, you know, for the, you, know you um, speak about God a lot, mm -hmm. and about the Bible, etc., which is the number one selling book in the world, as always has been. Um, what background did you have? Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I was raised Catholic, um, and I've been, I was Catholic up until a few years ago, um, and now I'm Protestant, um, and no disrespect to Catholicism. Um, I felt God nudging me into a different church because we needed to learn what the Bible has to say. Um, so it is not a shot at Catholicism, and we're not talking about any denomination in this book. Um, this is based on the word. So whether you're Protestant, Catholic, or even in some instances Jewish, because we're referencing a lot of Old Testament scriptures, um, it's the word of God. Okay, but um, it doesn't matter. There's no denominations in heaven. Okay, um, so as long as you're uh, you're batting for the right team, uh, it doesn't matter which league you're in. Folks, his name is Don Gallade. The book is called In God We Trust. The dollar, we the dollar we worship. And folks, uh, you can get the, if you want the book, you can call them at 501-1200. That's 570-501-1200. Or in the dollar we worship .com. We come back, there's a lot that the Bible says about money. And also, uh, he talks about the end times. The point is, uh, we talked about why he wrote the book, uh, the reasons for the book, and what, do we, what should we, or what should one try to get from this book. Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us, folks. I'm Sam Lassant. You're watching us here on uh, either SSP TV, Comcast Cable, or WQPX. Thank you so much for your support. Folks, he wrote a book called In God We Trust, The Dollar We Worship. Because it's not what you earn, it's what you keep that matters, and it's all God's. The guy's name is uh, Donald Gallade. Uh, in chapter 1, what does the Bible say about money? Uh, Matthew says, No one can serve two masters. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Interesting quote. So what does the Bible say about money? Well, let me ask you a question. Sure. True or false? Money is the root of all evil. I would think most people would say yes. Okay. True. And I did too. And then when you open up the scriptures and you not just read it, but study it and use other sources, Okay, find, this is what the Word says, well then find other uh, rabbinical sources or other Christian books or other Catholic books that will reinforce 
what this means and who wrote it and why they wrote it. And you get into the culture of the folks who wrote this. The word actually says in Timothy, for the love of money is the root of all evil. But we've, we've said it ourselves, well, money's the root of all evil. It's not true. It's the love of money. And that doesn't necessarily mean you have to even be on a quest for wealth. You could be broke, but still covet the almighty dollar and still being out of relationship with God, out of kilter of what he says. So it doesn't matter if you're Bill Gates or if you're a guy who's a bum living on, on, in the back of an alley, you could still love money so much that you are out of relationship with God. For example, Solomon was the richest man ever, even by today's standards. Okay? Um, Bill Gates is worth, what, 52 billion, something like that. Um, Solomon, in today's numbers, Solomon would have been worth today over a hundred billion dollars. So he was the richest man in the Bible, but he was the richest man ever. And how did it start? God said, what do you want? I'll give you anything you want. Paraphrasing, of course. Solomon said, I want wisdom. God was so impressed that he didn't ask for the death of his enemies or, or wealth and power that God gave him that too. So the point is we can attract abundance into our life by our, our thinking and our relationship with God. But the point was, in the end of Solomon's life, he had 700 wives, 300 concubines, and he was out of kilter with God. He wasn't doing what God told him to do. God said, don't marry these people. He did it anyway. So all of that money, the richest man ever, meant nothing at the end. And he was on his quest for true happiness. And he was on this eternal quest of what I, what, the filling this hole in his heart. And the hole in his heart was God-shaped. All he had to do was line up with what God told him to do and be obedient with what he had and not only be obedient with his money, but obedient with the rest of it. Because it's not a matter of how much you give to the church. That's not what the point this book is. This isn't about just give everything you have to God and you'll be rich. No, 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 no. There's a lot of other stuff that the Word says we should do in our lives that we don't. And that, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's like a, a puzzle that has to fit together. So it's all of those other portions of our life and then all of a sudden, when we're in communion with God on what He wants us to do and what the Word tells, all of a sudden we start to attract abundance. Did you ever see the saying, money goes to money? Mm -hmm. Right? Well, people say, oh, hey, I can't believe you won the lottery. Well, did you ever think maybe we don't know what's in that guy's heart? Maybe he gives away half of what he makes. So money comes to money because God says, you know what? You just helped out that person with giving them all that money, so we're going to replace what you've given. We don't know what's in somebody's heart. So we need to think about those kind of things before we judge anybody because we're not supposed to judge. Mm -hmm. The bottom line is this book was written about our individual relationship with God and unfortunately where your money is, where that God knows your heart by when he sees what you do with your money. Well, you always have the, a, a question where, you know, people are, are, you know, they say, well, look, it's, it's easy to say but well, we do have to pay our bills. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we'd like to live comfortable, not like multimillionaires, but, you know, um, and people who are rich, you know, do we punish them because they're rich? Or, you know, uh, there was a, a philanthropist who said, if you do well, you should do good. That's right. Okay, uh, which is very interesting. There are a lot of people who are doing very well, but they don't want to do good, all right? They, they don't want to help other people. And I don't mean sharing the wealth. Okay, Correct. I don't mean taking your money because you worked hard for it. I mean, if you want to help, you should help. Uh, but God does give you those talents, and then what do you do with that? Where is that, you know, where is that um, formula? Or, I mean, where is the boundary? Well, look, do I, what do I do? Do I give all of it away? I mean, you know, you're, you're telling me if I have money in the bank, it's, it's wrong, no. you know? The Bible is very clear. Once again, all we have to do is study. In, in the book of Malachi, Malachi tells, it's the only place in the Bible where God says, test me on this, okay? Bring the whole tithe, the tithe was 10%, into the storehouse. The storehouse is where you were fed. Bring your tithe to your church, okay? So that there may be food in my house. 
The Levites were the priests, okay? And their job was basically to be the priests. They didn't have to work. They were given the tithe. And God says, see if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing until it overflows. And God actually says, test me on this. It's the only place in the Bible where God says, test me. So it's very clear. We are to bring 10% of what we have. Well, people say, do I want 10% of the net or 10% of the gross? Hmm? You want a gross blessing or a net blessing? Your call. Bring 10% to the <laughs> storehouse. Do I want a gross blessing or a net blessing? That's, it. That's interesting. Yeah. That's it. Mm -hmm. Bring it to the storehouse. I believe in my opinion, strictly my opinion, the reason we're seeing churches close today is because people are tipping God. They're going in and they're throwing a buck in the plate. Church can't, hey, heating bills just quadrupled and you're throwing a buck in the plate. But people say, well, I got this bill, I got this bill, I got this bill. You don't understand, but God cares about what's first. The Israelites witnessed something called a first fruits offering, where the ones the plants were growing, the first the ones that budded, they tie a little ribbon around them. And when they did the harvest, that first fruit offering, that entire offering was given as an offering to God. It's kind of like the equivalent of you giving your whole first check to God for your, for your uh, um, uh, first paycheck of the year. And somebody says to me, well, that's insane. I got all these bills. But you don't understand something. You can't doubt give God. When the Israelites were in bondage in Egypt, they were as poor as it can be. They left Egypt. Moses led them out of Egypt. They left with all of the spoils that Egypt had to offer. The gold, all of the, all of the, 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 the jewels. They were millionaires overnight. God can change your situation overnight. People put God in his bottle and they think he's like this little lamp. We're going to rub him when we need something. If you're in relationship with him and you're in communion with him and you're on a regular basis saying, okay, good. God, show me what to do. You will unlock the blessings and there will not be lack. The Israelites wandered around the desert for 40 years. Their shoes didn't wear out. They didn't have to hunt for their food. Food came to them. How? God took care of their provisions. When they screwed up and they were out of sync and they complained, that's when the junk happened. So if we don't complain and we say, all right, Lord, show me what I'm supposed to do with my money as well as everything, God says, here you go. Here's your blessings. When you talk about, you know, tithings and, and giving, you know, there's an old expression, or there, not an expression, but some envelopes, uh, any church, Protestants, says, you stop giving to God when he stops giving to you. And yes, it is, it is uh, sad when you, see, when you see people, and you can't judge people. You can't Correct. say they have means, but in the same token, you could have an idea. When they're just throwing a dollar in, you know. And, we're not and, supposed to look at what they're throwing in. No, I mean, but, the, but yeah. the point is that they know who they are, sure. you know, and, and yet they'll spend hundreds or thousands on other things, but they won't support their church, whether it's Jewish, Catholic, Protestant, or whatever the case may be. Folks, Don Gallade wrote the book, In God We Trust, The Dollar We Worship, because it's not what you earn, it's what you keep. That matters, and it's all God's. If you would like to book 50170, excuse me, 501200 or in the dollar when we come back, what about the end times? Is the end here? Stay with us. Thanks for staying with us. I'm Sam LaSant. Don't forget 24-7 SSPTV.com or email me at Sam at SSPTV.com. My guest, folks, Donald Gallade, uh, author of the book In God We Trust, the Dollar We Worship. One of the chapters, why our country is in lack. Um, can our entire nation witness lack? America is one of, if not the richest country on the planet. The country founded on, not from, religious freedom. Founded on religious freedom. Our founding fathers put God ahead of everything. Regardless of what the liberal media and the radical left may say, you can witness the presence of God in a big way in our nation's capital. The buildings are decked with angels and biblical references. The statue of Gabriel adorns the top of the Capitol building, for example. Personal note, we hope that they continue to stay there. That's right. But it's based on what we're seeing in this country, how um, what's happening, and I don't want to get political, but the point is I don't think people are stupid. I think they know what's going. We have a few minutes left. The last part of the book, we talk about end times, and everybody's, you know, new world order, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Uh, comment on that. Well, Unfortunately, there's no way you can talk about this without being political because ultimately it is, 
in the book of Revelation, it talks about in the last times, there will be a falling away. People will fall away from God. They will fall away from the church. And there will be this remnant that makes it. And a remnant is a small piece of something that once was, like a remnant of a carpet. Okay? So we could see that unfolding. We could see God not being welcome. We could see, every, you know, in God we trust has to come off our money. There's a little insight to the title of the book. All right, so it's all about taking God out of everything, but then when something happens like Columbine, when something happens like 9-11, they say, well, where was God? Well, unfortunately, you told him to leave, so he did. Okay? Um, you know, you could talk about the New World Order, and you could talk about your conspiracy theories, and, and, and I'm not here to address those things, but the point is, in the last book of the Bible that talks about the last days, and it shows there's some signs. And we don't have enough time to unpack this, but I encourage people to do some studying on this. There are signs that say, you'll know you're in the last days when. And, and all of these things are unfolding. But the point is, God tells us, here is how you will be blessed if you do the following things. But then our country does the opposite. Okay? Uh, we, we, we abort 53 million babies a year. And then we ask, why isn't God not blessing this country? We, 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 we endorse behaviors that are, are, make Sodom and Gomorrah look like a walk in the park. And they say, well, why is God not blessing this country? Um, well, you can't have your cake and eat it too. You're either going to serve God or serve money. Period. The end. Interesting thing I wanted people to, I don't have time to unpack this, but if you look at Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, chapter 9, verse 10, and chapter 9, Verse 11, 9, 10, 9, 11. Isaiah is a book written about prophecy to Israel. I'll just read this real quick. Isaiah 9, 10. The bricks have fallen down, but we will rebuild with dressed stone. 9, 11, 9, 10. All right? Read that. Meditate on that. Learn what that means. The United States is paralleling what happened with Israel. And in a scripture written thousands of years ago, it references what we're witnessing in this country. Interesting thing, Don, with a minute left. You know, again, it's a matter of people to think. Uh, and you don't want to ever jam anything down anyone's throats. Like, you know, they, listen, people know who they are. Sure. People know whether they do good or bad. People know whether they're, they're practicing their religion. People know what's going on. They're not stupid, okay? And that's what they have to be uh, accountable for. Uh, I think the book um, is interesting enough. It's, it's not a Catholic, Protestant, or Jewish book. Correct. It's a very interesting book. It's called In God We Trust, The Dollar We Worship. Folks, I would suggest that you um, get the book. It's 501-1200. All the proceeds are going where? There are about five major ministries in this country that I've gleaned information from to generate that. And the proceeds from that go back into those ministries. So it's not even something that I've generated for profit. In the dollarwetrust.com is also where you can get it. Don, it's always a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, as I should say, keep up the good work. We appreciate it. Sammy, what I'd like to do, I, I want to have a little, little gift here for you. Oh. This is what we call precious feet. Oh. And it is the exact size of, of a baby's feet at 10 weeks. Yes. And you are such a champion to this industry, uh, this, this movement, excuse yes. me, and to... You're the only media in this town that would actually even talk about this book. And, you know, I want to, you, you could put that on your lapel yeah. and let the world know yeah. that you practice what you preach. Well, let me tell you something. And, and uh, I, I'm very proud of that. And I've said it from day one. Uh, you have a 10-week-year-old baby here and you could see it. But yet people think it's okay to stop these bleeding hearts. And that's the thing that really frustrates me the most. If you think it's okay to stop a bleeding heart, okay, uh, as our president does, and with promoting of the uh, pro-choice and pro that, and I'm being political now, it is dead wrong. I don't care what the situation may be, it is dead wrong to do this. And yes, I wonder when God's going to say this has to stop. Folks, Don Gallade, the book is In God We Trust, The Dollar We Worship. Uh, my email, sam at ssptv.com. I know I'll get a nasty uh, email from my ultra-liberal wacko friend who always says that I'm a moron. Uh, so we'll see you next time. <laughs>